Hey everyone, we are live. Great. All right. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight is our high school um, for programs forum. Um, and we are um, talking tonight um, regarding our uh, CTE fine arts and language language acquisition programs. Um, the our guest speakers are Joan Ashcraft, Chuck McCollum, and Pat Sandoval. Um, I'll let each of them introduce themselves, and then we'll start with some questions, and um, and then take questions from anyone in the um, who writes anything in the Facebook comments, um, so we can answer those live as well. So, Joan, you want to introduce yourself? Good evening, everybody. My name is Joan Ashcraft, and I'm the Director of Fine Arts. All the art forms, the four art forms that we honor in, in Tucson Unified School District, and also the Opening Minds to the Arts Integration Program that occurs in the elementary schools. Perfect, Chuck. Good evening, and, and thanks for coming. My name is Chuck McCollum. I'm the Coordinator of Career and Technical Education in Tucson Unified School District. Um, we have over 65 programs at 10 comprehensive high schools, and um, uh, we look forward to talking to you tonight about those programs. Great, and uh, Pat. Good evening, my name is Patricia Sandoval-Taylor, and I'm the Director of the Language Acquisition Department in TUSD. And we oversee federal um, and state requirements for students who are learning English. Um, our meaningful access area for um, parents that uh, need assistance in, in interpretation and translation. And also we oversee a two-way dual language program in 11 of our schools in TUSD. So thank you for coming and I hope this is um, helpful and informational. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, so our first question is for Dr. Ashcraft. It says, uh, what is the value of enrolling students in high school fine arts courses? I think we've seen a lot of that this year with the remote instruction. The ability of students to think creatively out of the box, to work with their fellow musicians or artists in different and unique ways. It really challenges their thinking and keeps them moving forward. There's considerable research out there about the value of the arts, specifically music, in long-term learning for students as an avocational avenue for them as they get older, and in thinking about new jobs that are going to be coming out in the 21st century. We're seeing a lot of change as a result of our remote instruction, and the arts are right in there. If you've seen any of the board presentations, you know that we have done some uh, virtual ensemble work, which has been really incredible in terms of building skills and technology. Great. Um, all right, so the next question is for Mr. McCollum. It is, my children are going to college soon. Why should they take a CTE class? Oh, great question. Um, career technical education not only provides um, instruction and prepares for, as Dr. Ashcraft noted earlier, the 21st century workforce, but it also prepares kids in a way where they have critical thinking skills, where they learn to collaborate, uh, work as a team, and everything needed to be able to be successful in a post-secondary education. It also gives them the opportunity to see what it's like and possibly um, choose a career field. But we all know that um, uh, college can be expensive. So to be able to walk in with an idea of what you would like to do for the next 30, 40 years of your life is, is, is quite valuable. And career technical education gives them with career opportunities. So much, Chuck. Uh, the next question is for uh, Pat. Um, can you tell me which high schools have a two-way dual language program? Sure. In um, currently, Pueblo High School is um, a program that hosts our two-way dual language programs. But we do have uh, ten other uh, elementary and middle schools that feed into uh, other high schools that. Um, have that are on the pathway toward the seal of biliteracy. 
So, but currently Pueblo is our only two-way dual language program officially. But let me ask a follow-up question to that, um, Pat. Um, can students, even if they started in elementary and middle school in one of our programs, is there, can they still take a language in high school? Well, absolutely. In every high school, we do offer foreign language instruction and they have the ability to earn that seal of biliteracy if they can demonstrate um, proficiency in English and in a second language. Um, in our two-way dual language programs, they do um, begin at kinder and first grade. Those are the entry points um, where students begin to develop a profound uh, background in the in the target language, which is Spanish. Um, and the goal is by their freshman year uh, in high school to be able to uh, take AP um, Spanish as freshmen and then move on to either take on an additional language or uh, take Spanish for special purposes like medical field or legal field. Uh, that's the goal of the program. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Ashcraft, I actually have a question for you. Um, what do the fine arts include or encompass fully? There are really five areas or disciplines in the arts. Music, visual arts, which is two and three dimensional art, could be painting, ceramics, uh, graphic design and so forth. Theater arts, dance, and creative writing. And TUSD has uh, really fulfilled all areas. We don't really oversee in the fine arts area the creative writing, but that is part of the language arts curriculum. Thank you. Um, next question is for Chuck. Um, how would my uh, student or my child get a hands-on experience once we are back into a hybrid or in-person lessons? Um, once we return to hybrid or um, total in-person instruction, all TUSD or all state CTE programs are mandated to have 51% of their time spent in a lab situation, whether that be an auto um, uh, lab or a bioscience lab or a culinary lab. Um, when we get back to school, we get back to in-person. Most of what is being done in instruction right now is leading up to that. Once we get back, we will probably, if not spend 100% of our time, we will spend a large amount of our time in a lab situation working with hands-on skills that the students need to be successful. Thanks so much, Chuck. Uh, Pat, if I could ask you, um, could you talk a little bit about what some of the benefits are of the two-way dual language program that TUSD offers? Sure, absolutely. So there's so much research on the fact that um, becoming bilingual and biliterate has cognitive benefits. It allows the brain to become more flexible, concentrate longer. Um, so those cognitive uh, piece, uh, p development helps you in, in as you move on to college um, or other careers in order to uh, also be you're, you're also more marketable when you know more than one language there are many employers that pay more uh, so you have the opportunity possibly to earn more when you know more than one language um, language is a resource and be able to be able to negotiate uh, you know we're 60 miles away from the border and so be able to be able to uh, toggle between two languages uh, is a necessity a necessity, whether you're working in the medical field, legal field, uh, if you're a business owner, to be able to do business. So there are many benefits um, in terms of uh, long term. There, there is even current research about um, it can it, it learning a second language can protect against Alzheimer's as well. Uh, recent brain studies show that bilingual brains function better for longer. Uh, after they develop a disease. So we know that it has long-term health benefits as well. So, um, you know, short-term, we know that 
research shows that our students can achieve in English uh, higher than their mainstream counterparts as well. So there's a lot of research in the field currently. Wonderful. Um, interesting research that's going on with uh, two-way two dual language or learning multiple languages. Um, my next question is for Dr. Ashcraft, and it is, um, do we offer advanced placement classes in the arts, and what are some of the classes that students might consider? We do offer advanced placement classes, particularly in music. There's the music theory advanced placement. There are some in visual arts and art history. Uh, we don't currently have one in dance, however, but there are some that are an extension of the theater arts. And it's very interesting because these programs uh, often encourage our students to apply for the state seal of arts proficiency, because within those programs, we have to do capstone projects and uh, to excel above the normal expectation. And of course, that takes takes us forward in terms of having students apply for the seal, which then allows them to have the special seal that's been designed in terms of the fine arts on their graduation diploma. And the state, of course, as Pat has mentioned earlier, has one in biliteracy. And I believe there's also one in finance. And there are not going to be too many seals available, but we have found last year was our first graduating class. And it was very exciting to see these kids. We had 42 of the students receive and complete, even under remote instruction, were able to complete the capstone project for their seal. So the advanced placement classes fit in beautifully with what the state is expecting for the proficiency seal in the arts. Thank you so much. Chuck, I have a question for you. Um, could you explain the relationship between being on track to graduate to be able to take CTE courses? Yeah, um, what we like to see, uh, a CTE course is not a course, it's actually a program. And so when you take, uh, uh, say, an automotive program, or you take a bioscience, or you take a dental assisting program, that program is two to three years. When you leave that program, you leave with an industry certification and a technical skill assessment that can lead you to um, um, employment, um, or on to post-secondary. What we like to do and what we like to see is our students be on track to graduate so that that program is not interrupted. Um, CTE students, because of their, um, their, their love for the program, I'm, I'll be quite honest with you, um, once you get them in, you can't get them out. Um, they have no trouble, no trouble staying on track because they wanna stay in the CTE program and finish it and, and get out and go either to post-secondary or to direct employment. Um, we, um, we consider ourselves uh, one, of the, um, one of the greatest dropout prevention strategies there is in high school because what we do is we see a student's interest and we build on it. And so um, staying on track is usually not a problem with our students in CTE. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, Leslie, I actually have a question for you. We've got a couple of Facebook questions from people watching um, eighth graders who are interested in applying to the high school of their choice. When can they, um, when can they begin to do that? Sure. So um, if you were looking at a magnet or an open enrollment school, application school, those applications are being taken now. And our first lottery is actually in process and those families will be notified over the next um, week or two. Um, however, our online registration for all our schools and high schools opens February 1st. So for mo most of our schools, um, you can, uh, you don't need to apply. You can register directly at the school through tusd1.org slash registration and um, click the school you're interested in and then create a um, parent view account and then register your child in one of our TUSD schools. Thanks so much. Um, if I could actually ask a question to um, Ms. Taylor or Mrs. Taylor, I'm sorry. 
Um, are there any requirements to enter the two-way dual language program at the high school level? So again, as mentioned before, the entry points are kinder and first grade. Um, we do at, for example, Pueblo High School currently um, offers um, social studies, U.S. history, economics, American government, and Spanish, um, and math uh, classes such as algebra, geometry, um, and chemistry and biology. We also offer Spanish language arts, um, AP Spanish, um, and AP literature. And so if you have a student that has um, followed that, that instructional pathway, they can continue their pathway. Um, if we have many students that come into Pueblo that are new arrivals that come directly from um, other countries, come, they, they might come from Mexico, they might come from Guatemala, and they can they enter those, um, they are able to take both the English and Spanish content areas as well. Um, if, you know, at the lower levels, we do have a screener to ensure that they can handle the level of content. Uh, we don't do that at high school. We really uh, just uh, allow those that, you know, have been in the program to enter it. And um, those that uh, possess a, a strong Spanish background, then they're able to continue to develop in English and in Spanish their, their courses. Thank you. Um, all right, the next one is for Dr. Ashcraft. Um, will my child be able to apply for the Arizona Seal of Arts Proficiency? And what does it take to apply for that? I spoke a little bit about that earlier, but in terms of applying, if you go on the Fine Arts website for TUSD, there is a complete application process. The uh, requirements are that the students are involved in one of the art forms every semester of their high school year and receive either an A or a B in that course. Additionally, they have to do 45 hours of extracurricular work that's a natural thing in terms of uh, rehearsing for a play, setting up an art exhibit, being in the marching band or the orchestra or choir in their after school rehearsals, maybe teaching privately to younger children, working with an elementary school, many different ways to fulfill that extracurricular requirement. And then we also mentioned earlier the capstone project, which is a requirement. And this year, I'm very proud to say we have 72 students who have applied for that, even though right now we're just doing remote learning. It's very exciting to know that we will have that many students either performing or composing or de developing a portfolio of visual arts examples that will be up and uh, actually adjudicated through a panel to receive this seal. Last year, we were so pleased with the 42 students that we had. Dr. Trujillo, our superintendent, actually spoke to those students right after their graduation and spoke about his own love for the arts and the fact that this was a very important thing for, for them to have and how he wished he had had some of the creative opportunities that these kids now are exhibiting through the work that they are creating. And the work has been fabulous in terms of original composition, performance level, uh, development of plays and so forth. So if you go on the Fine Arts website for TUSD, you will find out how to apply for that. Thank you so much. Uh, Chuck, if I could ask you, um, what are, could you talk a little bit about what the extended day CTE program is? Sure. Um, because we're not able to put every program at all of our comprehensive high schools, we have put together an extended day uh, program. Right now, um, our extended day is our culinary program at Catalina High School, our diesel engine repair program at Santa Rita High School, and also our dental assisting program at Santa Rita High School. And what that means is a student from, let's just say, one of our other comprehensive high schools, or we've also had homeschooled students and students from other districts, can come over to Santa Rita, let's say, for dental assisting, and take um, that course two days a week. Um, we, we usually run it on uh, Monday. They stay there for two and a half, three hours. And at the end of the semester, they get in um, a semester's worth of work and then ultimately a year. 
They follow that up the following year um, with the advanced classes and uh, they leave there as, as completers within the program. We are looking to expand that. We are also looking at a more remote with some um, online options for students to be able to get um, into our CTE programs and kind of expand our extended day. Um, it, we had, um, I'll use dental assisting for example, our first year of, of dental assisting, we had over 16 students who qualified um, and took the Dansby exam and eight of those students are employed right now as dental assistants. Some of them as they go through Pima to be able to become dental hygienists. That's our goal. Our goal is to get two careers and whether they need further post-secondary education or certification from a two-year program, say at Pima Community College, we try to get them into the field so that they get some working experience. Extended day opens it up to all of our students in TUSD and not just those who can, uh, who attend the home site of that program. Great. Um, Chuck, on a slightly different subject, but similar to that, um, can you tell us what is the Intern to Work program? Okay, our Intern to Work program began three years ago, and it's a collaboration between into our industry partners and Tucson Unified School District. Um, I will use automotive as an example. Um, a, a automotive student who's in the advanced program, the advanced class, say, uh, fourth year, um, will be able to go to, let's just say, Jim Click Ford. They will work at Jim Click Ford. They will be paid at Jim Click Ford for 120 hours. At the end of 120 hours, the employer or the internship um, coordinator has the opportunity to either end the internship or to offer that student a, a direct employment opportunity. Um, we've had great success. Um, I'll use an example from Tucson High School, the student who was at Chapman Automotive uh, finished the um, 120 hours. He was offered an entry level position at Chapman Honda. This is two years ago. They sent him um, to specific training on Mercedes Benz. And now um, I dare to say he makes more money than I do. And he is 21 years old. Okay. Um, our intern to work, um, we've had students in automotive, we've had students in bioscience. Um, in our graphics programs all go out and work. Um, not only does it give the student an opportunity to get direct employment, but it also gives the student an opportunity to see what goes on in the workplace. And uh, we, seem, we, we find it very valuable. We are, um, to have a program like this, and I'm gonna toot our horn a little bit, um, we are the only district in town that has that type of organized program where a student can earn money and also um, get work experience. So that's our intern to work, very valuable, very, very big part of our, our CTE program. Incredible, thank you so much. Uh, Pat, if I can go over to you, um, could you tell me a little bit about the Arizona Seal of Biliteracy and how and when it is awarded? Absolutely. So we are so happy to announce that this is our fourth year um, at awarding the seal of biliteracy. It is a seal that is ad adhered to the di high school diplo diploma of participants that pass the criteria that demonstrated biliteracy in two languages. They have met the criteria in English and in a second language. Um, we have awarded it um, in English and Spanish. We have individuals that are in, have received it in other languages such as uh, English and French, English and German. Um, but again, our, our two-way dual language program, that is the main goal is uh, to, at, to embark in a pathway that leads them to be able to receive that seal of biliteracy. Um, we were one of the first in Southern Arizona to award them. Last year, we awarded 174 seals of biliteracy on diplomas. Um, and so we're proud of that work. We're proud to be one of the only ones to, to be uh, 
adhering those two diploma, you know, it says a lot to employers and for those um, applying to college. Um, students do receive in a two-way dual language program, they receive uh, benchmark awards that lead up to that seal. For example, at kindergarten, uh, they will receive a certificate. At fifth grade, they'll, they'll receive um, a ribbon. At eighth grade, if they continue in that pathway, they'll receive a medal. And then again, uh, with the culminating piece of a, uh, uh, a cord, a graduation cord, and a seal of biliteracy upon graduation and meeting the criteria for the seal of biliteracy. Um, I have put in the chat um, what exactly the criteria is to receive that seal um, and what tests, uh, what exams um, are, um, are required or eligible for um, students to take in order to meet. Uh, and, and be able to receive that seal. It is a seal that is only given to public school uh, students. So again, this is not something you can receive in a private school. It is um, the state of Arizona approved it for public school students that are developing biliteracy. So. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ashcraft, can you tell us how remote instruction has impacted the fine arts courses and have you seen success even though um, our students have been remote? Well, behind me, you see uh, examples of our high school programs. Mark Wood working from Trans-Siberian Orchestra, working with orchestral students, our mariachis, our dance students, our marching bands, our visual arts instruction, steel drums, et cetera, et cetera. But all of these programs have been successful with remote instruction because one of the first things the school district did was to approve the purchase of programs such as Smart Music and Breezing Through Theory, uh, actually four programs, to allow us to continue our instruction with students that has been most successful. And I mentioned earlier how we have presented those to the school board. We just did one this week with two of our schools, Sabino and Duell in middle school, to showcase the work of the students. Now, to go along with this, of course, students have to have instruments. So during our shutdown in the around March of last year, our instrumental staff went out, actually brought back all the instruments where they were sanitized and cleaned. Our transportation drivers helped us with creating masks for the instrumentalists to play their instrument and also the wind covers for the instruments so that students could work with their instruments individually. The school district has even allowed us, even during remote instruction, to bring students together, rehearsing after school in small groups, socially distanced, so they can continue to hear themselves, not just alone, but within the whole group of uh, their classmates in marching band or steel drums and et cetera, et cetera. And this has been a wonderful um, help to us. Uh, we believe that the remote instruction will remain a very important part. Smart music allows the students to be able to practice their particular part in the music or in their choral selection or in their band orchestra, and then to record that so the teachers can actually hear, and then to put it together with the whole ensemble. So that's a very worthwhile project uh, that we will will keep with us. So we're very excited. We feel that it's moved our educational programs in the arts forward and forward in a very critical and important way. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashcraft. Uh, Chuck, if I could ask you, could you tell me a little bit about the certification aspect of the CTE program, um, where the certifications are recognized as far as if it's just in Tucson or if it's elsewhere, um, how they take their certification exams and some information like that. Great. Um, yeah, uh, every one of our career and technical education programs offers a state approved, industry approved um, certification. For example, our auto programs offer uh, ASE, our, our welding programs or AWS, our, our uh, media programs will um, offer Adobe, our business programs, Microsoft Office. Um, as I spoke earlier, our dental assisting is Dansby. 
So all of our programs offer industry certification. Now, students have to pass that certification, but they are made available for any of our students. If, if a freshman is um, skilled enough to take the Adobe exam, we allow it. They are paid for by our department, so there is no cost to the students. Um, they are recognized by industry. So if a student goes out and um, looks for direct employment, it is, a, it is a big part of their resume um, that they can use. Um, it's probably one of the most important things that we make available to our students. Um, TUSD CTE, I'll be honest with you, of all the districts in the state of Arizona, our, we had the second most students pass certifications last year. Um, it was a great accomplishment by our instructors and by our students to be able to pull that off. Um, I, I can't think of anything more valuable than walking out of um, your high school, uh, your high school career with a certificate. It, it just gives validity to what you have done um, over the last two to three years in our programs. Thank you. Um, the next question is for you, Pat. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the classes that are taught in Spanish and are they, or, or how are they different than if the student was to take them in English? Well, the difference is, the, so at the high school level, um, as mentioned before, um, we, we have social studies, um, for example, we have U.S. history, economics, American government, those are all taught in Spanish. Um, the math courses are algebra, geometry. In science, we have chemistry, biology. We have Spanish language arts. We have uh, Spanish AP um, and AP Spanish literature. The standards, um, the curriculum that is followed is exactly the same curriculum that is followed in English. It's just the language of instruction that's different. And in those classes, um, teachers deliver that instruction solely in that target language. So um, they're, they don't switch back and forth in English and Spanish. If it is designated as a Spanish class, the entire class is, um, is you know, the instruction is completely delivered uh, in that target language, which is Spanish. And so there should be no other difference other than, you know, some nuances, ex uh, you know, for example, uh, if you have Spanish language arts, of course, the text is going to be different than uh, the text that you would use in English, but the standards um, are very, are the same standards, basically. But. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, Dr. Ashcraft, if I could ask you about some of the instruments that are available for our students, um, and is there a cost to utilize those instruments for their fine arts courses? We have a lot of questions about that. TUSD owns almost 15,000 instruments, everything from uh, all the wind instruments, clarinet, trumpet, saxophone, flute, tuba, baritone, all the wind, all the string instruments, violin, viola, cello, bass, many percussion instruments, timpani, snare drum, jazz set, et cetera, et cetera, guitars. Um, and of course the steel drums is sort of a special program, but at any rate, uh, those instruments are overseen by two instrumental repair technicians who are full-time repair people. Um, they help us with the purchase of instruments. They see that they are sterilized and cleaned as I referred to earlier. And most of the instruments you see behind me, most of them are owned by TUSD so that they come to the students rent free. And our budget has allowed us to purchase instruments and keep them refurbished for a long period of time with the strings that are necessary for the stringed instruments. We have a number of piano labs. So many students want to learn to play piano and many guitars, of course, which are also very, very popular for younger children, the recorders and the orphan instruments. But uh, it is a great resource for kids that cannot afford their own. Of course, when kids get into high school and are pretty serious about their arts 
classes and particularly music as we are referring to now, many of them are encouraged to purchase their own instruments. One of the things I love about our instrumental repair technicians is their ability to assess instruments. Many people donate their instruments to us that are not being used anymore and our people are able to refurbish them and get them out for the student use. So we're very, very proud of that factor. And it's one of the things that has designated TUSD as one of the best communities for music education because of their work. Thank you. Um, the next set of questions are for Chuck. Um, so I'd like you to tell me a little bit about what does it mean to be college and career ready? And when should my child start thinking about what career they might be interested in and what um, schools might have programs in the CTE programs that make sense for me? Okay, we'll start with the second part of the question first. Um, it's middle school, I would say, is um, where students really need to start thinking about exploring college and career options. Um, it's it, to walk into a high school and, and kind of have an idea of what you want to do, uh, where you want to be four years later, and not have to wait till you're a junior or a senior uh, to make those decisions is critical right now. Um, it's very competitive out there. So what we're looking at right now in TUSD is the implementation of a college and career program through our counseling department um, in our middle schools that will directly tie into our high schools. Um, as far as looking at what program, this will also, I, I will say, give you the opportunity to then look at the high school that might offer that program for your student to give them a better opportunity of, of choosing. Since we are an open enrollment district, um, it, it, you know, kids can come from the east side to the west side, from the west side to the east side or to central to find the program that they really want to take and um, could lead to their career choice. Uh, it's never too early. It's a big emphasis by the state of Arizona um, for us to start getting kids career ready whether they're going to go direct employment or they're going to go post-secondary, students need to start looking at that, I would say, as early as middle school. Thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, Pat, if I could ask you next, um, could you tell me if two-way dual language programs will be expanding in TUSD, specifically maybe even at the high school level? That's a great question. You know, currently, as I mentioned before, we have 11 uh, programs in, two, in the Tucson Unified School District. Um, we have Bloom Elementary that is currently up to fourth grade. And we're hoping um, that those fifth graders will be able to expand to a middle school. Um, we're, we're hoping to, um, as we moving forward, that we would be able to, to build it at McGee. Um, we also have Davis uh, Bilingual Magnet that has a two-way program. We have Grijalva uh, Elementary. We have Hollinger that's a K-8. Uh, Maryville McCorkle, which is also a K-8 program. We have Mission View, which is a K-5 program, and Ross Scrooge, which is a K-8. We have Van Buskirk, which is a K-5, and White, which is a K-5. And we have Pister Middle School, which is a K-8. I'm sorry, it's a, a six eight. Um, and so, and of course, as mentioned before, Pueblo. So we know that we'll be looking at another high school um, in order to expand. Right now, um, uh, the, the charge is to, most, to look at a, a new middle school and eventually a new high school. So I don't wanna name one right now, but we will be adding a new high school uh, to, this, to this menu. Uh, in the coming two to three years. Great. Um, Dr. Ashcraft, can you tell me what are some of the performance or expo ah, sorry, exhibition opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for our students? Of course we do performances, art galleries, and uh, other events within the school district that we sponsor out of the fine arts department. But above and beyond that, each of the arts disciplines has a state organization that oversees regional and all state 
festivals. Even this time of the remote instruction that is going on. And uh, of course they're doing it very differently now. But there are many opportunities like that for performance and exhibition. Now beyond that, most of our high school programs plan some sort of a trip. Uh, sometimes they go and clinic with a college or a university where they have great instruction going on. Many times they go to Disneyland where there are some remarkable opportunities for the students to showcase, perform, and then be clinicked by some professional artists that work in commercial music and so forth. And so um, a lot of our children, youth actually in the high school, really enjoy that opportunity. Many of our advanced honor groups, I'm thinking of some of the mariachi groups perform for, oh, all sorts of organizations in town and out of town. And they go as far as maybe Texas, or sometimes they travel as far as uh, some of our bands have traveled back east for the Midwest Conference. I remember a, a few years ago, Rincon University Jazz Band was selected as a premier group and performed at the Midwest Conference, which is a really huge deal. So the individual programs uh, in each of the disciplines provide those opportunities. I'd like to say a word a little bit about the theater, theater arts programs. Some of their advanced groups perform at the state thespian concerts or festivals, not concerts, but festivals, and uh, provide some really remarkable work that's being done online. Just very recently, we work with Mark Woods from his Trans-Siberian Orchestra and the Sabino High School Orchestra. And now that remote instructional piece they did Carol of the Bells for the Christmas season, is now being seen on Facebook and all of the social media for the Markwood Music Foundation. And that is quite an honor. So that along with this uh, Best Communities in Music Education Award that we've received, I think it'll be now our sixth year coming up. Uh, it really separates our district from other districts in terms of arts offerings. Thank you so much. Um, if I could ask Pat, um, as a parent, what can what can a parent do to support their high school student um, throughout the two-way dual language program? Well, um, you know, again, it is language development, and language development does um, take time. But apps, you know, um, we our teachers are hi all highly qualified. They, in order to teach these classes, they have full endorsements. Um, that is required on their certificate to teach these classes as well. But, you know, supporting primary language in the home, um, it, promoting that uh, the ability to use the language in the home is, is, uh, is extremely beneficial. So um, finding ways to allowing the student to express themselves, um, to read, you know, uh, various types of um, literature, maybe even, you know, if you find uh, Spanish language uh, magazines, you know, in the, in the local grocery store um, to be able to practice and to um, uh, use what they know in terms of their uh, either home language or their newly acquired language. Um, so again, the more you use it, uh, the more fluent you'll become. Um, and there are many, you know, there are Spanish language shows that are very um, uh, beneficial. Uh, libraries carry many, many uh, titles in Spanish. Uh, and there are wonderful websites. Uh, one in particular is Colorín Colorado. Uh, there are great resources, parent resources uh, on that website. So once again, it's called Colorín Colorado. I'll type it in the chat. Um, where it provides parents with ways to support their students um, with language development in the home, um, all the way from your young, very young children, all the way to adults. But again, using the language in any way, any modality is, is what um, is the best way to acquire it and to develop that fluency in the language. So that's the goal. 
Thank Not unlike so practicing an instrument. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, I just want to add here that many of our students who have come up through our two way dual language programs end up performing in the mariachi group, Mariachi Aslan in um, in at Pueblo, which is uh, they're a renowned group. And uh, that Spanish language development is what allowed them to participate, you know, beautifully in uh, the mariachi group. And, yes. and other mariachi groups across our district as well. Yes. So they fortify, they fortify those programs with the language. <laughs> Absolutely. And the cultural part, obviously. Thank you so much. Um, Chuck, we actually have a couple of questions on Facebook for, uh, for you. Um, are there any um, after school CTE programs available? And from your experience, uh, what's the most popular CTE program and why do you think that is? Okay. Um, we do offer our extended day pro programs, um, which we're looking to expand, but right now our after school programs are at Santa Rita High School Diesel Engine Repair and uh, we're gonna offer a culinary at Santa Rita and also our dental assisting at Santa Rita. Um, we currently run our culinary program after school uh, in our extended day at Catalina, and we're we're looking to move a little uh, to move a little further ahead and, and start looking at more of the west side of town and what we can offer at Choya High School and at Pueblo High School for extended day program. What is the most popular? That 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 <laughs> is a loaded question. If my teachers are watching tonight. <laughs> so um, what I would like to say is this, um, our culinary programs are, are very popular with our students, but so are our sports medicine programs and our home health safety programs. Um, we service um, 5,000 CTE students, high school students in the district. Um, so for me to say one is one is uh, more popular than the other, um, it, that would not be true. Um, it, our instructors are great instructors. They, they are kid instructors. They're kid centered and they really, really draw kids in. We wouldn't have 5,000 kids in our program if they were not popular. I think what makes them popular, uh, to be quite honest with you, is it's a hands on. Um, it's an applied classroom where you take what you learn and you actually do it, which is the same as fine arts and the same as language acquisition. You take what you learn and you apply it. And I think that's what kids want. They don't want to sit in a desk and get sit and deliver. They want to do something. And I think that's where CTE um, uh, really gets kids out and about and, and really makes it um, a wonderful experience for them. All right, great. Um, Dr. Ashcraft, can you tell me if I have a student that's interested in being both in the one of the arts programs as well as an athlete, is that possible and does that create any challenges? I think that's a wonderful opportunity for kids to be able to be involved in both. And I tell you, we have worked so beautifully with interscholastics over the years. Um, so the answer to that is yes. And the challenge is that the teacher in the arts class and the coach on the athletic field, much as Chuck has done many years when he would, had my son in his program, um, at any rate, they, the teachers have to work together. And they many times there are conflicts in terms of here's a game and here's a competition that the kid is going on. And lots of times kids can work it out to do both but also the directors have to be willing and the coaches have to be willing to, to realize those students are shared and we want our kids to have the full experience to be well-rounded citizens. We know how important athletics is and we also know how important the arts are in terms of building the, the whole child, the whole youth, the future leader of, uh, of the community. And so uh, although there may be different fees associated with that participation fees, and maybe different challenges without within those programs, they absolutely should try to do both if they possibly can.
Thank you so much. Uh, Chuck, we have another Facebook question for you. Um, this parent has a new freshman at Choya High School. Uh, she wants to know how uh, soon can students enroll in CT at, or I'm sorry, CTE or JTED courses? And what's the difference between the two courses, CTE and JTED? Okay, um, if we're talking about a student coming out of middle school into high school during the registration period, um, they will be able to um, register, sign up for a CTE program. Um, uh, one thing we will be doing in February is we'll, we will be doing a high school expo or a middle school expo, excuse me, which will um, be available to all middle school students so they can see what CTE programs are available and at what high schools. Um, as far as the JTED and CTE, we are pretty much one in the same. Um, the difference really is, is that our programs are held on the high school campuses, as opposed to the JTED programs, which are held at the central campuses, either Camino Seco, um, uh, Masterpieces uh, Innovation High School, um, or in, in, in Vail at Empire High School. So it's a little bit more of a travel as opposed to um, being able to take your um, CTE class third hour at um, Choya High School. Um, most, if all, not all JTIP programs are held after school and um, are two to three hours in length. They're just very concentrated programs. So, but otherwise, we all work together and it, it's really just one simple program. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Pete, if I could ask you so for a high school student who's on their pathway to uh hopefully towards the uh, seal of biliteracy what does kind of a typical day or typical type of classes that they would take look like pat you're muted sorry at the freshman level they um the goal again is for them to be able to take an ap spanish class or Spanish literature. Um, and then they could select another one or two content areas in Spanish. And then the, uh, the rest would be um, core content classes in English. And so um, it could be up to about 50% of their day in English um, and 50% of their day in Spanish. Now, um, technically the, the, the pathway, again, taking that AP Spanish at freshman, um, they've attained nine years of, of uh, Spanish. And so we like to encourage them to take uh, either a third language um, or yeah, a third language or um, take Spanish for special purposes. And we hope to at some point uh, offer some CTE uh, classes in Spanish as well in order to, to have the that goal of providing uh spanish uh, classes for special purposes like maybe legal translation um or medical pieces we don't have all of those pieces in place but that is the goal of the program so currently again high school students take that freshman ap they qualify with those scores and if they have qualifying scores they already qualify for that seal if they show um, competency in English uh, on AZ merit and also in their in their new in their targeted language. Um, and then again, they have the ability to continue to, to develop their Spanish academically uh, in the courses that I mentioned. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll do one last question. This one is for Chuck, and then we'll ask each of you to give a couple wrap-up statements. Um, Chuck, can you tell me about dual credit classes and how does a student go about being a part of a dual credit course and what does that really mean? Okay, dual credit, is, that's a great question from a parent. Um, dual credit, different than AP, is, is credit uh, that is earned at Pima community college or any um, uh, community college that we might tie in with. Um, concurrent credit is earned at the University of Arizona. The difference is, is that uh, uh, dual credit is free to the student. 
um, if you're taking uh, marketing and you're going to get credit, um, dual credit in business 100 or business 148, um, the teacher in the um, class teaches as they would a Pima College class. And at the end of the year, the student will receive three credit hours. Now, if you're a parent, now let's think of this from a parent aspect. If you go through CTE classes or any dual credit class and you leave high school with those units, those put you further ahead in either your associate's degree or your ABOR or whatever you're looking for at the junior college or community college level. It's a savings. It's a money savings. Um, a lot of our CTE classes, our automotive classes, our biotechnology classes, business classes, culinary classes, dental assisting classes are all offering dual credit at this time. Um, concurrent credit is limited to our bioscience. Um, but there's nothing better than getting through high school, I'm gonna tell you right now, and then taking a dual credit class and earning that college credit when you're a junior or a senior in high school. Um, I will say this, we are um, expanding our department. Uh, we are looking as, as uh, Ms. Stanwell Taylor said earlier, we are looking to expand into the dual language uh, area with a program at Pueblo High School in uh, business. Um, and we, we work with the fine arts department, um, our uh, stagecraft program at um, Tucson High School um, is a CTE program that works with fine arts. Um, one thing I want to say is that all of our departments collaborate. So when we work in ALE, which is dual credit or concurrent credit, we're working with the advanced learning department. Um, so there's a lot of great things you can get out of CTE. And one of them, probably one of the most important is school credit. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Pat, do you have any final comments to share? Sure, so I, you know, I, I'm glad Chuck mentioned what he did. We do collaborate a lot. Um, you know, we're so lucky in TUSD to be able to offer two-way dual language programs. We're one of the only districts, the only district in the Southwest that offer two-way dual language programs. And it is so amazing to watch students when you go into their classrooms. Right now during COVID, it, it's difficult, but to go in and see our young students becoming proficient in more than one language. Those students who, for example, may be only English dominant, starting to acquire a second language. You know, it is our, our school board um, recognizes our two-way dual language programs as ALEs, advanced learning experiences. And um, when you walk into a kindergarten classroom and you see a student uh, using the new language, you know, just the eye movement of these students, these are gifted programs, really what is what they are. And so if you want your child to, you know, to participate in the, in the strongest, uh, you know, program to develop uh, good problem solving, cognitive uh, ability to toggle between languages, it's amazing. And, you know, I'm looking at Chuck, his grandson is a first grader in our two way dual language program. And, mm -hmm. and um, we talked a lot uh, and his family about making the decision to uh, have their child um, enter the program. And um, I think it's pretty exciting to see how his grandson is acquiring a second language. And he, he has a lot more to say about that than I do. But it's exciting to see that ALE program that isn't offered anywhere else here in Tucson Unified School District. Um, so uh, it is again an ALE. It it you know um, it's it's a gifted program. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ashcraft. Final well, words? I'd like to say something on behalf of all of us because we do work collaboratively. This morning, the three of us were involved in a leading with crisis workshop that our director uh, provided for us. And we're all interested in our students becoming leaders. And a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And so one of the things that we're all trying to teach, regardless of our specific area that we oversee, is the value of perspective and how we view things and the importance of that for our young students that we are training, because really, even during this time of crisis, what we're learning, we're learning about ourselves, what's inside of us, 
what helps us make decisions to move forward. And this is what we're trying to teach our young people, to be resilient, to be critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, and to find the strength within ourselves to move through our experiences. And the more experiences for our kids in high school, middle school, elementary school, the better, whether it be in dual language, the arts, CTE, they need it all in order to be successful and to move forward as leaders in this very challenging time. So I think TUSD is a wonderful place for that to happen for children. Thank you, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Chuck, any last things that you'd like to say? Yeah, wow, I think um, Dr. Ashcraft put it, all, put it all together there. But what I will say is that when you, you make a choice for your student to come to Tucson Unified School District, and as you can see, we've all stopped talking about our individual departments and now we're talking about the district as a whole. When you make that choice to come to Tucson Unified School District, your student's going to get a great education, not only in the core classes, but outside of that area, in areas that's going to help them grow as a person, prepare them for either college or career, and you leave better students, better people than when they walked in the door. And I can say that, and the three of us probably have, four of us probably have a hundred years in the district. Um, <laughs> and I will, I will at this point tell you that um, my grandson is in the dual credit or dual credit, dual language program at Bloom. Uh, and it's amazing. And I have never seen a teacher teach remote to 15 students, first graders hold their attention in Spanish and get it done. And so that's what you're looking at when you come to TUSD, that type of instructor, that type of program. Um, I'm proud to be a part of TUSD as so are my colleagues. And um, if we've convinced any of you that TUSD is your choice, then this, this was very beneficial for us tonight. So thank you for all attending. And thank you, Leslie, for setting it up for us. Oh, no, thank you. I, I totally agree with your all of your comments. Um, TUSD, I have a middle schooler. She is learning so much and oh, love the arts. Uh, she is a violinist, so she plays in the advanced orchestra um, at Dodge, even though she's a sixth grader. So um, she's, you know, really, there are some amazing programs and teachers within our district. And uh, thank each of you for taking the time tonight and for everyone who was watching. Uh, have a great night and we look forward to talking to you soon.